Court is calling 2021 CR 7353, State of Texas versus Ramon Brooks. Can I have the parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garrett, hand your honor. Defense? Thomas Beck for a defendant. Are you Mr. Brooks? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Brooks, I'm showing you was entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, just a moment. Okay. I'm sorry, what? Yes. All right. Are you the same Ramon Brooks who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2021 CR 7353 for the offense of theft from person on September 10th, 2021 for a period of three years? Is that you? Yes, I am. State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number 43 on or about the 14th day of April 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Ramon Brooks, they didn't they or fail to comply with the rules, regulations, or instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Correction Department's duly diagnosed uh, residential facility, and that the defendant has refused to participate in the DBRF program services in violation of condition number 43. How do you plead to that true or not true? True. All right. Did you understand by plea and true to violation of condition number 43, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number 43? I still plead true. All right. Is there an agreement? Uh, yes, there is, Your Honor. And what is the agreement? It is to adjudicate guilt and revoke his community supervision, sentence him to 18 months in the state jail facility. Is that the agreement? That is the agreement, Your Honor. We would ask for credit for time, sir. All right, Mr. Brooks, you wanna raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for, a rec for the record, please. Ramon Brooks. All right, Mr. Brooks, why are you not participating in DDRF? So my reason was to come back and explain to you that probation was not going to be the best for me because of my conditions outside of jail. Uh, they aren't the best of conditions as far as me being um, homeless and without any credentials. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm working with state, uh, state officials to try and get my stuff back. Fortunately, I didn't have enough time before I was revoked on probation. So I was sent back and uh, that's why I came back from the program to explain to you that probation might have, there might be uh, something else besides probation that I'm gonna see. All right, so what is your mental health diagnosis? Um, I'm, I'm under psychiatric medication as well. I have a history for that. So, Do you know what medications you're on or what you're taking them for? Yes. What are you taking them for? Um, for anxiety, schizo schizophrenia, I was told that I had. And those, those two are the main ones, bipolar come in too. All right. So where is your family? Um, my family live here now. They just moved, but they came back. First, I can reach them, but now I can have reach of them. So that's a good thing. All right. So what's your relationship with your family? My relationship, my status is a good status. And is your family going to help you with regards to your um, medications and making sure that you're seeing a psychiatrist? Yes, yes, they will. All right, and which uh, your family members who who's here now? Um, my mother never met my father. Stepfather's been there since I was a child. All right, I will tell you, uh, state defense with regards to your agreement, this is my concern. My concern is he has mental health issues and they're not being addressed. And he's telling me that his diagnosis is schizophrenia, bipolar. And so what I'm anticipating happening is if I sentence him to 18 months, I don't know how much time he has in, but he's going to go to the state jail facility if he doesn't have his completed time done um they're going to put him wherever they're going to put him and if he doesn't take his meds at the facility there's going to be a case that's going to be issued where they're going to have to file motions to have a judge order that he take his medications and then he's going to be released from the state jail facility because nobody's going to hold him at the state jail facility because he's unstable 
and he's going to be released back into society without his medications, without anything. And then we're going to be back here, maybe not in my court, Mr. Brooks, but maybe in somebody else's court for a new case. So I understand that he wasn't following rules at DDRF. Uh, probation, do you know what specific rules, or does anybody know the specific rules he wasn't following at DDRF? Did not. He no longer wanted to remain in the program and wanted to, he was ready to do whatever it was necessary to do. All right. So, Mr. Brooks, it appears to the court that you are competent, but you have to look at the big picture. And it seems to the court that you're trying to take the path of least resistance, like the path that's quickest for you. But I can tell you what's going to end up happening is once you get off your medications, which more likely than not you will, because you're going to be like, I'm feeling great. I don't need these medications. You're going to stop taking those. And if you commit another offense, who knows where you're going to be, who knows what it's going to be. And you may end up in prison for a long time. We just had someone here in this court for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And you know what their problem was? The state hospital released them when they should not have released them. And now they're doing um, I think 13 or 12 years at the prison now. So in the court's eyes, you should not be just going to the state jail facility then getting out because you're not going to be prepared. So if you want, I can follow this agreement and sentence you to the 18 months, or uh, I can see about getting you some treatment, which is what you need. You need treatment for your mental health issues. Mental health issues are just like any other issue that people have, be it uh, cancer, be it, um, you know, diabetes or whatever it may be. I don't consider people who have mental health issues. I don't consider it's their fault. It's not, oh, let me go to the grocery store. I'm going to pick up some mental health issues on Al4. I don't believe that but you need help and you're trying to take the least the, the path of least resistance because your whole thing is I need to get my ID. You'll be able to get your ID. You don't need your ID at DDRF. And that's where I'm sending you. You're going back there and you're going to follow through on everything. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to keep my eye on you because I'm going to make sure that I get updates. Does, does he qualify? For the same program again? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask that he be re-referred. And we would certainly uh, hope that you would not find him guilty and leave him on deferred. He's not a convicted felon. No, I'm not going to find him guilty. You're going to go back to DDRF, okay? And here's the thing. I'm sending you back there, and I'm going to expect you to actively participate. Do you understand? If there's an issue with you and you say you're working on your ID, or something of that nature, guess what? Probation has programs that can help you get your identification. But you don't need your identification at DDRF because they know it's you because I'm telling them it's you and you have your SIT number. The whole reason I came back was to refuse, it's because I didn't, well, I refused the program, but it was because I didn't want to get into probation with all the problems I had on outside of jail. I tried probation for the first time and I thought that it would work out, but it didn't exactly work out my way. So no, explain. Okay. Here's the thing. You say that when you get out, um, you don't want to be on probation and have the issues you have on the outside, right? Yes. If I send you to prison and you get out, you're still gonna have those same issues on the outside. The only issues that's not gonna be there is the supervision, which I'm not inclined to release you on probation because you haven't done anything. You haven't been successful on this probation at all. And I'm sympathetic and empathetic to the fact that there are some mental health issues here, but it's not going to be me sympathetic and empathetic towards you and giving you something less than. You understand? So what's going to happen is I'm denying this motion. You're going back to DERF. If there's a problem with your identification, or there's a problem with some of your living arrangements, you let us know. And probation, see if you can refer him to felony drug court as well, because I know they have dual diagnosis. And felony drug court, if they accept you, 
They'll be able to help you with your identification. They'll be able to help you with housing. They'll be able to help you with all of that. Okay. But I'm not going to um, give you the easy way out. And then guess what? If you come back and you haven't followed the court's instructions, I will hear arguments for both sides, but I will tell you the state and your, your counsel in all these probation cases, they come up with agreements. And sometimes I follow those agreements, sometimes I don't. But I want you to realize the agreements that they come up with, I don't have to follow. The contract you have for probation is with the court. It is not with your attorney and it's not with the state. You understand? So I'm denying the motion. You're going back to DDRF or either you're going to felony drug court. The end. Okay. All right. I'm doing this to help you so that nobody will see you back in a criminal court again. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Brooks. So I'm going to deny the motion, altering the man conditions to a uh, referral to DDRF and felony drug court. That'll be while in custody. And I'm going to make a notation on the docket sheet that you need help with your identification. Is that it? Uh, probation. Can you let probation know that they need that he needs help obtaining his identification? And if felony drug court accepts you, let them know that you need help obtaining your identification and they'll make sure you get it. Okay. And so with this, that means I'll be continuing probation, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you.